China's military pushes forward, threatening Taiwan and challenging the U.S. Plus, you won't believe what's censored on Chinese TV. Then more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. The war for Taiwan is getting closer. But first, you can help us continue to uncensor China by joining what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Check out all the cool perks you'll get on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. So last week, I told you Chinese jets performed a pincer maneuver surrounding Taiwan on three sides. This week, things are getting worse. On Monday, China said an aircraft carrier group was exercising close to the island. Taiwan's defense ministry says 15 Chinese aircraft, including 12 fighters, entered its air defense identification zone. The Chinese aircraft carrier was the Liaoning. It's China's first functional aircraft carrier. This was a major escalation. The Chinese forces conducted exercises to the east and west of the island of Taiwan. China claimed it was just a routine training exercise, which is true. Training to invade Taiwan is now routine. But Taiwan's foreign minister responded to the uh, exercises with some pretty strong words. Our defense ministry is very determined in defending ourselves. Uh, we are willing to defend ourselves and is without any question. And we will fight the war if we need to fight the war. And if we need to, uh, you know, to defend ourselves to the very last day, we will defend ourselves to the very last day. How did China respond? China sent more fighter jets into Taiwan's air defense zone on Wednesday. The U.S. military is warning there's a rising risk China will invade Taiwan. Now, whatever could lead them to that conclusion. But the U.S. and Australia are working together on contingencies around a possible Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Here's Michael Goldman, the charge of affairs at the U.S. Embassy in Canberra on the Australian National University's National Security Podcast. I think we're committed as allies to working together, not only in, in making our militaries interoperable and um, you know functioning well together, but also in strategic planning. And when you look at strategic planning, it covers the range of contingencies that you've mentioned, of which Taiwan is obviously an important component. But the Chinese Communist Party is also preparing. Here's a great idea from Hu Jin, the editor-in-chief of my favorite state-run media, The Global Times. This was in response to a Chinese netizen on Weibo, China's version of Twitter. I will catch you, the young male netizen, and send you to bomb the bunkers on Taiwan as a member of the commando. If you dare to run away, I will shoot you from behind. Sounds like the Chinese people are all on board for an invasion of Taiwan, whether they want to be on board or not. The genocide of Uyghurs in China is turning into a real PR disaster for the Chinese Communist Party. Who knew people could be so touchy about genocide? Some people are suggesting a boycott of the 2022 Beijing Olympics could put pressure on the regime. Here's U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price answering a question about the U.S. and allies joining a boycott. Well, it is something that uh, we certainly wish to discuss uh, and that um, uh, it is certainly something that we understand that uh, a coordinated approach um, will be not only in our interest, um, but also um, in the interests of our uh, allies and partners. Uh, so this is one of the issues um, that is on the agenda, um, uh, both now and going forward. And when we have something uh, to announce, we will uh, be sure to do that. And now the State Department has something to announce. They aren't going to do it. The White House also says a boycott is not on the table. China is certainly warning it will not tolerate a boycott of its Olympics. But there are still growing calls for at least a partial boycott of the Olympics, like the idea from New York Times columnist Nicholas Kristof that athletes could participate, but government officials and companies shouldn't. <laughs> That's funny. He thinks the Olympics are about athletics and not corporations. But there is one kind of boycott the Chinese regime encourages, a boycott of Western brands that refuse to use cotton made with Uyghur slave labor. More after the break. Welcome back. 
The Chinese regime is going hard against some Western companies like H&M and Nike. They're facing an official boycott in China because they refuse to use slave labor cotton from Xinjiang. The problem is, these are popular brands in China. Sometimes people even show up on television wearing these clothes. Not to worry, the Chinese regime has figured out a surefire way to completely erase them from the public memory by making TV shows blur out their logos. Unless these guys are actually naked. Even large groups of people had their clothing logos blurred out. Yes, anti-China forces must be blurred to protect the feelings of the Chinese people. Wait, what's going on? The Chinese Communist Party is very proud of its COVID vaccines. They even require foreigners to take a Chinese vaccine to get into the country. But it turns out, Chinese officials might be a little less enthusiastic about the Chinese vaccines. Leaked documents show Chinese officials trying to dodge vaccinations. For example, in a town called Xintai, only three out of 66 officials have gotten vaccinated, with another two on the registration list, showing a dismal willingness rate of less than 10%. Meanwhile, Chinese health officials said they plan to vaccinate 70 to 80 percent of the population. In some cases, overzealous officials have gone door to door to vaccinate residents and even threatened to blacklist the uncooperative. I guess the other 20 to 30 percent that won't be vaccinated are the officials and their families. You know, in other countries like Canada, Vaccine corruption means the rich and powerful trying to get the coronavirus vaccine before they're eligible. In China, vaccine corruption means the rich and powerful trying to avoid getting Chinese vaccines whenever possible. Yet another Chinese official has been sacked for corruption, this time for owning nearly 3,000 real estate properties. Xu Changyuan, a former high-ranking CCP official, was involved in mafia-linked assets worth more than $1.52 billion. And Xu's family sure used mafia tactics. The Xu family employed violence in collecting debts. An investigation showed they cut some debtors' Achilles tendons, forced some into cutting off one of their fingers as a punishment, or subjected others to illegal detention. Now, this may surprise you. But according to local reports, she was also very active in the genocide against Falun Gong practitioners. Falun Gong is a spiritual group the communist regime has been persecuting for 20 years, killing them and selling their organs in state-run hospitals. I mean, you're not a good communist regime if you can't make a little profit, right? And now it's time for me to read a question or comment from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Those are fans who support the show on Patreon by pledging a dollar or more per episode. Steve M. says, I understand the desire to boycott the Beijing Olympics. I think it would be more effective to go to the Olympics and then have all the non-Chinese participants carry flags for Taiwan, Tibet, Xinjiang, etc. and see how China tries to censor that. Well, Steve, that's an interesting idea. If there were an entire stadium filled with people holding flags for those places, it would certainly make a huge impact. But it probably wouldn't get that far. If you're talking about the Olympic athletes carrying flags for Taiwan, Tibet, and Xinjiang, they would get in trouble. They could possibly even get disqualified from participating in the Games. This is according to a new rule from the International Olympic Committee. Athletes are barred from conducting protests or demonstrations on the field of play, in the Olympic Village, during medal ceremonies, or during the opening or closing ceremonies of the Games. And if you're talking about ordinary audience members holding flags for those places, well, that would still be hard to pull off. China has an incredible surveillance system. From the moment you land at the airport, to inside your hotel lobby, to the train to the Olympic events, to the security measures at the venue, Chinese authorities can track your every move. If you're carrying a Tibetan flag, they'll know about it. And if you try to organize a mass protest like this even while you're in the U.S., they'll know ahead of time. Try creating a Facebook group. You think just because Facebook is banned in China, Chinese police don't use it to monitor people overseas? The one thing Chinese authorities can't do 
is force people to come to the Olympics. Well, they can't force non-Chinese people to come. So a boycott is one of the few effective things people in the West can do without getting detained in China for it. And if politicians and companies in the West refuse to support the 2022 Olympics, it would be a big embarrassment for the CCP. That's why just the serious threat of a boycott might be enough to get them to make concessions, like letting independent inspectors into Xinjiang. Thanks for your comment, Steve. And if you'd like me to read your question or comment, join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Pledge as little as a dollar per episode. Visit patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.